Jesse V. And as you can see in today's video, I'm wearing a corset. I feel like a goddess of the vampires. And you know I always love showing off my moon tattoo. All right guys, so as you can tell by the title of today's video, today I'm going to be talking about some creepy, bizarre things that were totally normal back in ancient Greece. This is going to be like my medieval times video, and I would love to do this for like ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, etc., etc. Before I get started though, I just want to let you guys know that we have a bunch of new stuff on the website. My sister Mandy V actually has a mystery box that she launched. It's sort of like a health and wellness box. It is so cute, so awesome. We also have some Valentine's Day gnomes, which are adorable. And we restocked all of our light up aliens. This is our best seller ever. They go so quickly. So if you guys would like a light up alien, I have linked it down below. All right guys, let's just jump right into today's video. And I just want to warn you, everything I'm going to be talking about today is pretty gross. I feel like all the facts I collected are just bleh. Because first we're going to be starting with earwax. And yes, we all have it. Even you watch it right now. You have earwax in there. Maybe not a lot. Or maybe there's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. When you visited a doctor in ancient Greece, you could pretty much count on him reaching into your ear and taking a little nibble of your earwax. That is how your doctor would get a diagnosis. He would taste your bodily fluids. Like imagine going to your doctor because you have like a cold or something and he's like, okay, let me look in your ear. And you're like, cool, totally normal. He's just checking the color, checking to see if I have too much earwax. And then he reaches in and he's like, mm tastes like apple pie. Now, while tasting your earwax was the most popular thing to do back then, he might also ask if he could taste your phlegm or lick your vomit. Yeah, you still heard that right. All this started with Hippocrates. He believed that the body was a collection of fluids, that each bodily fluid had a specific taste. So Greek doctors were taught how these specific bodily fluids should taste like. So when someone was sick, they would taste it. If it didn't taste the way it was supposed to, then they would be able to give their diagnosis. Why do I have a feeling that doctors got very sick back then? I'm just, I can't get over it. Imagine going there and your doctor's like, All right, vomit in this cup. Mm, just like Coca-Cola. Okay, the next fact is that people used to wipe themselves with stones. Toilet paper didn't make its way to Europe until the 16th century. Before then, people had to find their own ways to clean up. Sometimes they would use like a sponge attached to a stick, but not everybody was so lucky. More often, the Greeks would clean themselves with stones. They kept a pile of pebbles where they would go to the toilet, and they would have to grate these hard stones against their butts when they were cleaning up. It was said that uh, three stones were enough to wipe. So if you ever run out of toilet paper, head to your garden. Other times they would take broken shards of ceramic pots and scrape themselves clean with that. Some particularly vengeful Greeks would actually etch their enemy's name onto the piece of pot and then they would just uh, wipe their butts with it. Like why wouldn't they just use cloth or something? I'm just, I'm so confused. Okay, the next fact is that athletes sold their sweat. So before competing, Greek athletes athletes would actually take off all of their clothes and would cover themselves in oil. And that was literally how they would perform. Whether they were running or doing some other sort of sport, they would always do it naked. So, and by the end, they were obviously usually covered in filth. So afterwards, the athletes would just stand there and they would scrape off all their sweat and dirt, dead skin, blood, all off their body. And then a group of slaves would run around collecting all the scrapings and bottles up all the weird disgusting things that fell off the athletes bodies and then the jar of these scrapings would be sold as medicine. People would rub this sweat and goo of other athletes onto their own bodies. They believed that it would calm their aches and pains or people would just do it so that they could smell like an Olympian. Mm-hmm. Okay next is that they used to use crocodile dung as cream. Crocodiles were a bigger part of life for the Greeks than they are for us and that led to some weird details in Greek medicine. They actually had this warning to people about crocodile bites. It is said that if a crocodile walks back into the patient's home after biting them and pees on the wound, the patient will die. That is just so specific. I guess this would happen so often enough that they actually had to like write about it and make a warning about it. Crocodiles weren't just a threat though, they were a cure too. The Greeks recommended treating scars around the eyes by applying a 
little bit of crocodile dung as eyeshadow. Why do I feel like so many people also got pink eye back then? Then we actually have the unibrow look. Apparently unibrows were very fashionable back then. It is said that today having a unibrow is considered to be among the highest tier of fashion don'ts. However, back in the days of ancient Greece, the men definitely preferred the eyebrows to be a little more connected than they tend to be now. So if you had an extra fuzzy unibrow, all the men were after you. Then we have testing a Spartan baby strength. Now this is really disturbing. Before the Spartan baby was brought before a group of elders, he had to go through the wine test. And the wine test is as messed up as it sounds. They would bathe the newborn baby in wine and then would just wait and see what happened. It says that if the baby convulsed and died, it was too weak to be a Spartan warrior. And if that was the case, the father would throw out the baby. He would just throw him away. It says if the baby didn't convulse and die from being bathed in the wine, he would be taken to a group of elders. And these old men would literally just decide the fate of the baby. Like if he showed any sign of weakness, they would get rid of him. If he looked like a strong baby, whatever that means, they would keep him and he would grow up to be a warrior. But yeah, it's just so messed up. Like a lot of these fathers would put their baby on a mountaintop to be left to die if he didn't meet the expectations. The next fact is that when you died, you would carry money with you. In Greek mythology, Hades had a ferryman named Charon, whom you had to pay so that he could transport you to the other side of the Archeron River. And if you couldn't pay, you had to wander along the riverside for a hundred years. That's why the ancient Greeks buried the body of their dead with a coin under their tongue. So when they arrived at the river, they could pay Charon to continue on. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Charon? I'm probably not. And the last fact is that Greek statues weren't actually white, which is surprising to me. Even though all the statues from ancient times you see today in museums are white marble, they were once painted and adorned with bright colors. It was only due to aging that the colors chipped off and faded away, so now they're just they're just white. All right, guys, so those are all the facts I'm gonna be talking about today. If you like this series and you want me to do more like creepy things that were normal back in ancient Rome, in ancient Egypt, wherever you want me to talk about, give this video a thumbs up and let me know and comment where you want me to do next. And yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.